Hey everyone, this is going to be a bit of a ramble regarding my last live stream, which took a look at the Aspen Ideas Mail uh, Loneliness Panel hosted by Stephanie Rule with um, Westmore, Richard Reeves, and Michael Stroutmanis. I had to keep looking that up. I think it's Michael Stroutmanis. Before I jump in, I have a request from this side of the camera, or should I say my recording studio. Please give this video a like and also consider subscribing to the channel if you are not subscribed. Okay, everyone, I'm going to try to be brief here because I don't have a lot of time. And uh, yeah, that is my limited resource right now. But live streaming is not easy because you're performing, especially when you turn the camera on. So I, I typically write points down and I try to get through everything, but it has to be appealing and entertaining to some degree for the audience watching. So naturally, when I live stream, I typically have wrapped up my nine to five duties and still my and so my mind isn't completely free to create but anyway long story short there was something i forgot to mention in that live stream and that's that i think for all the criticisms that panel got and there were many i think one of the most important observations was made by the panel moderator stephanie rule from msnbc uh, it wasn't a comment by Wes Moore. It wasn't a comment by Richard Reeves. <laughs> of course, his comments got a lot of ire. And uh, it wasn't a comment from Michael Stroutmanis. Stephanie Rule, a mother herself, pointed out during that discussion while she was moderating that at her home, in her hamper, she has clothes for girls that say things like the future is female and i don't know if she has a black husband but she did mention black girl magic girls rock all of those things and then she asked the question well what do i have for my son or what do we have for the boys okay and i thought that that was a very very profound observation on her part as a mother and i've heard that it's not until women become mothers of boys that they understand some of these things and they, they understand how it's not it's not until then that they understand the decentering of men, quote unquote, or the fact that our current education system doesn't serve boys well and that boys to a large degree are, well, they're under attack and they're not uh, prioritized, and that many of them are falling by the wayside. So I thought that it was a powerful question or observation from her, or by her, a powerful observation by her, that the male panelists probably couldn't have made because the, the question to them would have been, well, what's wrong with the future being female? What's wrong with black girls rock or black girl magic or what's wrong with all of these uh, upliftments while there are none for the boys and what is the effect on the boys so i i just think yeah we're, we're in that era right now where if you one of the conundrums with this is number one what's happening to boys is there anything happening to boys a lot of people in our society don't know that there's something happening to boys. Why are boys and uh, men going to online spaces? What are they seeking there? What are they looking for there that they're not getting in their families and in their friendship circles or at school? Um, but also, what are the larger ramifications for society if your boys and your men are falling by the wayside? If they're not protecting, building, providing, and being parts of families, what are the long-term ramifications for everybody? And while I think the online voices, the demonized online voices, while I do think that they helped push that discussion at the Aspen Ideas Conference, I think that many of the higher-ups the think tanks, 
the lawmakers in Washington, corporations, I think people are looking at this and saying, okay, well, yeah, what are the long-term ramifications if, in fact, boys and men are withdrawing and if our current education system does not serve them well and if they're not, in, you know, in many instances today for the younger generations, if they're not asking girls out, what are the long-term ramifications, okay? And so I did point out in that live stream, I did cite that the majority of our, uh, at least our army, I suspect the Marines, the Navy, the Air Force, and the Space Force, I think that the majority of those um, branches of the military are still male. But, and, and there is data showing that the, the, the amount of the, the, the enrollment in the our armed services, the, the percentage of female enrollment is increasing. But can you have a military... Or, or law enforcement that's majority female, okay? What happens if we have that? A majority female army and a majority female law enforcement um, apparatus across the country. Will that be sufficient? Will that be good enough? And also, and also as a scientist myself, human beings are a, uh, a sexual species with a, a male gender and a female gender. I know that's controversial to say today because... There's a there's been a push to make things non-binary, but but from a biological perspective, we are a binary species. So if one half falls off and just drops out for whatever reason, then what is the impact on everybody? And I think that's something regardless of which side you're on, if you're on the the Richard Reeves uh, politically correct group or manosphere as Dr. Tiasan Johnson likes to refer to Richard Reeves and his uh and his co and his cohort or his his cronies or if you're from the the Dr. Tiasan Johnson side, you know, go ahead, say it. Say it. Don't be ashamed to say it. What is the impact and what is the effect on everybody? And I think going back to Stephanie's comment or her observation and I'm going to end with this I think this draws into focus some of the uh, dangers and the things that corporations like Disney, the content they're creating, and uh, and and you know, some of us believe they're ruining Star Wars and they're ruining Marvel by um, there, there's nothing wrong with have, having feminine characters and feminine protagonists, but if it's if the whole point of the media is just to dissenter men and weaken men. What are the long-term ramifications of that for everybody? Because media and art, that particular type of media and art, that does shape perception. Okay. And if you're, if the gender that's traditionally been called to fight and protect and provide and build, if you're, taking away images like that if you start telling them then that that's not what they do and they don't have a role in doing that and that the parts of themselves and the parts of their personalities and their biological makeup if you start telling them that that part of themselves is evil then that's going to have much larger ramifications for society and for us as a species so i just wanted to follow up on that, again, when you're doing things live, sometimes you can forget some of the key points that you wanted to present. And I know for me, it dawns on me later. Sometimes when I'm laying down at night, I forgot to say that. And um, yeah, I, I'll say this as well. I don't know if this will make the final video, but yeah, we're in that era where in this instance, we know that boys are falling behind in certain areas certain key areas, all right? And the question, we're in this era now where if you're going to do something for the boys, then the question comes up, well, what are you doing for the girls? Even if the girls are doing okay and the girls are flourishing, we're in an era now where doing something for the boys is seen as doing something against the girls or taking something away from the girls. I forgot to share this in my live stream 
uh, and that's that I wrote a promotional essay for my book project noting that or capturing pieces of the interviews of the players that I that I the players and the coaches that I interviewed for my book project and they all happen to be men I the, the, my story is from my perspective I'm a man I'm a, I'm a, and I was a young man when that story took place it took a lot of work to create the book it took a lot of work to create all of the promotional materials surrounding it and a woman left a comment underneath that first offering discussing my interviewees and their comments and it said this was good i'd like to see something for the girls as well okay and i thought that was significant and in today's modern times that's reasonable and I did add some language to the preface of my book stating that today women are playing basketball too at a higher level um, as a content creator. When you create something and someone says, well, yeah, I want to see this. And yeah, you, you didn't put this in there as a content creator. You kind of go, well, go ahead and, and create your own thing. And a part of me did say, go ahead and create your own thing. That's not what this was about. And again, it was written from a, a man's perspective. But we're in that era right now. If you're creating this if you're creating this for the boys, where is this for the girls? So one other thing, actually, too, before I wrap this up, and this gets back to the question of boys and, and men going to these Internet spaces. And it all it also goes back to Stephanie's observation. And that's that. I don't think any of the men on the panel could have said that regarding the, the clothing and the paraphernalia and the hamper being uh, all pro-girl and pro-female, I don't think any of the men could have said that. And that takes me back to a conversation I had with a friend a couple of weeks ago at a gathering. And it was all men, and we were talking. And he said, you know, there's some things you just can't say out loud today. Okay, and I think that's at the heart of part of this. There are some things, as men, you probably don't want to say out loud unless you're willing to go 10 toes down and you're really and you're willing to take on an angry mob so that's that's part of what's happening today and then the other thing for those of you who would say well in terms of all female paraphernalia girls rock girls rule the world uh, the, the force is female the future is female i don't know that we've ever had a time when when paraphernalia was being made like that for boys Boys rule, boys rock, boys, the future is male, the force is male. I think that we had traditional roles and in media, you know, many of your protagonists like Luke Skywalker and, uh, uh, you know, Captain America, Superman, Batman, you know, those were the leads. He-Man, of course, they created a She-Ra to go along with him, but I don't think that was intentionally done it was just these were you know the, the males they were the they were the the protagonists right and and i think that was one of the controversies with the black panther is that they intentionally decentered the black panther and made his sister the protagonist i don't think but my point is i don't think prior to this time that it was intentional that you know boys rule boys boys magic you know, the future is male, all those things. I think things just naturally, things were created naturally. And it doesn't seem to be that way now. So I'm going to wrap this up there. Yeah, I thought about Stephanie's observation, and I thought it was a very, very important observation. Mothers, society, think tanks, policymakers, the corporate sector, they're all looking at this and they're wondering what the ramifications are for everybody going into the future, because this is going to affect everybody. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. This is Big Discussions 76, my original channel. Well, before I go on, I don't think anything misogynistic was said here. <laughs> That's the other thing in this era you know, just the, the slightest hint of something is, oh, you're a misogynist. You're being you're being a misogynist, a misogynist. You're saying something misogynistic. Anyway, let me get back to my ending spiel. This is Big Discussions 76, my original channel. 
My name is Dr. Anwar Youssef Dunbar. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you want to donate something to the channel, my Cash App and PayPal are below in the description box. You can also leave a super thanks. I am a blogger and an aspiring author. My book is almost done, part one of it. I have a newsletter. The link is below in the description box. Uh, if you are a reader, please consider signing up. Shout out to Diamond Dave. There aren't a lot of readers uh, in terms of the demographic of people who watch YouTube content. So if you're a reader, please consider signing up. So with that, everyone, I'm going to wrap this up. As always, remember that your attitude determines your altitude. Always try to do your best. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. And for this particular instance, and in many instances in life, ask why. Don't rush to judgment. Try to tell the whole story, but also ask why, because the why is often the most important question. Take care, and I will talk to you the next time. Bye-bye.